Welcome to today's online webinar, The Kindergarten Experience at WCCS. This is a session in which we will explore the distinctive value of the kindergarten program at Westminster Catawba Christian School. This presentation will last about 30 minutes and we're going to discuss the educational philosophy, the curricular and co-curricular offerings and other related areas of interest to the rising kindergarten parent who's considering our school. My name is Jane Wilson. I am the Director of Admissions here, and I'm joined today by our Early Childhood Principal, Dr. Sandy Jolly, and one of our wonderful kindergarten teachers, Miss Jean Earle. And before we get started on our topic at hand, we'd like to go ahead and introduce ourselves. Um, as I said before, as the Director of Admissions, I get to work with all prospective families through the admissions process. I oversee re-enrollment for current families as well. And this is my 11th year here at the school. I have two boys of my own, both of whom have been through kindergarten at our school, and they're now in second and eighth grade. Dr. Jolly, tell us a little bit about your experience at WCCS. Sure, thank you, Jane. I found WCCS 33 years ago when my own children, um, for my own children, and I've been on staff for 32 years. I have three children who started in preschool and kindergarten and graduated well-prepared for college and life. Two of my grandchildren are now attending. As the early childhood principal, I work with infants through kindergarten. I'm very blessed to serve the youngest children at WCCS. For the purposes of today's presentation, I also wanted our listeners to hear from one of our master teachers, Mrs. Jean Earle. Well, thank you, Dr. Jolly. Um, I have been a kindergarten teacher here at WCCS, and I'm serving now in my 17th year at the school with an overall 40 plus years in Christian education and in the classroom for that long. Um, I was called as a very young child to be a kindergarten teacher, and the Lord has seen me through all those years, and I absolutely love it. One of the reasons I love kindergarten is because, as kindergarten says, it's a child's garden, and I get to watch these children who come into my class just blossom as the year goes on. I also have a grandchild who is in the school as well, and I'm excited about that. Mm, and we are excited to have you ladies here today. Thank you so much for joining us. And as we are about to consider the distinctives of our kindergarten program at the school, I also thought it would be helpful for us to take a look at the larger picture of our school profile. We are the largest Christian school in the Tri-County area of York, Chester, and Lancaster in South Carolina. We serve infant through 12th grade students, and we are located on two campuses. The picture that you see on this slide is actually from our upper schools, so 6th through 12th grade. We are an accredited school, which means we are certified in the curriculum, the teacher qualifications, all the things that are a part of the school that make us a legitimate school through the Association of Christian Schools International, um, otherwise known as ACSI, and Cognia, which used to be called Advanced Ed, for those of you who are familiar with that name. We are blessed to be a ministry of Westminster Presbyterian Church, and we are celebrating, believe it or not, our 30th year of Christian education here at the school. And also, as many of you are well aware, God presented a remarkable opportunity last summer for our growing school, allowing us to purchase this new campus, the former Rosewood Elementary School, and we moved our entire lower school, infant through fifth grade, to this campus. We started school here this August, and this facility has proved to be a wonderful place to grow and learn with kindergarten occupying three beautiful classrooms. Uh, this all specifically designed to facilitate the learning experience for those early childhood years, which open onto their own playground. That's one of my favorite parts, I think. <laughs> Um, so as we've considered the nuts and bolts of the facility and the location, um, I'd now like to turn the presentation over to our principal, Dr. Jolly, as we explore the philosophy behind our educational approach. Hey, thank you, Jane. Yes, it's important to step back first and to look at why our school exists. As a ministry of Westminster Presbyterian Church, our school exists to educate students to bless our world as disciples of Jesus Christ. And as we prepare our children to be disciples, we realize that this starts when they're really young. It involves teaching the whole child, not just the academics. 
We teach children to see themselves in the world from God's perspective. Education should help children discover and develop their gifts and help them to understand God's calling for their lives. Our goal then is that children will build a healthy and lasting foundation in Christ. Therefore, our theme verse is 3 John 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Mm, absolutely. And I think that question of why, that's a question any parent should ask when they're considering a school choice for their child. Why does this school exist? And what is important to me? What is my why? And so what then, Dr. Jelly, can we expect as parents from the kindergarten program here at the school when we're looking at the why that drives our decisions? Sure. Well, Jane, kindergarten is an important year. It's full of tremendous growth. We're laying a foundation for future learning and life. We take a developmental approach to learning, which really just means that we place more emphasis on the human being than on the academics. We use child development research to understand how children grow and learn. And this developmental approach understands that children are immature, they're impressionable, and they're easily influenced. It understands that play is a characteristic of childhood and is how children learn best. Of course, cognitive development is important. Mm -hmm. We focus on brain development and teaching children how to learn. We teach in a way that helps the whole child develop cognitively, but also spiritually, socially, emotionally, and physically. And I love that we are intentional about being developmentally appropriate. And that's not just something that kind of comes from the stratosphere. You know, it is a Christ-centered approach. Um, as we look at, you know, God's plan for human growth, God does have that plan. And it, you know, in Luke 2, 52, where it talks about how Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man, isn't that what we want for our children? I mean, I certainly do for my boys, not just to have knowledge, but to have godly wisdom. And I love that, you know, we are part of a school that recognizes that each child is unique we support the personal stages of childhood development. We have balanced growth. We want balanced growth in all areas. And that the curriculum is flexible. It's individualized. It presents meaningful choices for children. I also love that we're a school that considers the whole child, right? Where teaching allows for real world, concrete experiences. I love seeing that in your classroom, Ms. Earl, <laughs> where you have hands-on learning activities, uh, where children can use their senses, and all of that fosters all these important lifelong skills like curiosity, discovery, creativity, communication, collaboration, problem solving. And so I feel like this developmentally appropriate approach really encourages a love of learning, right? And a curiosity about God's world. Wouldn't you say, Dr. Jolly? Yes, definitely, Jane. And we're a school that recognizes that learning is grounded in biblical truth. Children are going to learn that Jesus is the truth. Mm -hmm. They learn and develop a high regard for scripture. Our program is laying a foundation for a, for a Christian biblical worldview, where children learn to apply God's word in, to life in age-appropriate ways. Mm -hmm. We teach those biblical values and how to be other-directed. Each classroom is an authentic community where children learn how to love and care for each other based on God's love for us. Mm -hmm. We began to develop the fruit of the spirit and practice how God's love flows through our speech and our behaviors. This Christ-centered approach is child-directed. Teachers know children well, and they teach to support their individual strengths and weaknesses through differentiated instruction focusing on how to best meet each child's needs as we recognize that children learn through real world experiences. They need opportunities to fail, to learn how to stick with something until you succeed. Real world experiences allow children to discover academic concepts in age appropriate ways and challenge their thinking without unhealthy stress. Our program provides a good balance of hands-on learning and traditional paper and pencil tasks. So as a kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Earl, how would you say this kind of approach plays out in the kindergarten classroom? 
Well, Dr. Jolly, what we do in kindergarten is we have a lot of active engagement. Mm -hmm. And as you have said, through hands-on learning experiences and understanding that our little ones need to move their muscles in learning mm -hmm. a new concept. They need to be actively involved. We focus on oral language in this emergent literacy stage. And we recognize that children need to talk before during and after learning concepts. And that includes talking with teachers and peers. Mm -hmm. We provide foundational concrete math experiences, helping the children to know why math works, not just how it works. We also incorporate that into all our other subject areas as well. We provide differentiated instruction with a classroom of no more than 18 students and two teachers. With that, we can focus on the learning needs of each child. Kindergarten allows time for meaningful play, not just through two full 30 minute recesses, but also through learning centers in the classroom and learning activities for core content areas. There is an emphasis on all domains and an emphasis on emotional well being and spiritual development. Yes, Mrs. Earl, these are all special elements of our kindergarten program facilitated by our wonderful teachers. Teachers who model Christ like attitudes and actions with loving, caring, and joyful hearts. They provide stable biblical influences that shape and guard the hearts of children. They do that through building relationships and placing a high priority on them. Restoration and growth characterize discipline in the classroom. As Mrs. Earl said, we have a low average teacher-student ratio of eight to one. Typically, we have 18 students with a teacher and assistant. Our teachers are well qualified. They hold certification through our accrediting agencies and participate in yearly professional development and training in best practices. Our teachers desire a strong partnership with parents to support student growth and learning. They keep communication open through weekly emails and are always available to support parents. Teacher profiles are also located on the website if you'd like to learn more about each teacher. Mm, thank you, mm -hmm. Dr. Jolly. And I actually included a link to those teacher profiles and stories. You can find them on the website um, under the About Us section as well. And those are that's really one of the hallmarks, right, of our school is our fabulous teachers because you are the living textbook. You are the living curriculum that's implementing in all subjects, um, all of the expectations that we have set forth for kindergarten. Um, and Ms. Earl, you probably know this better than any of us at the table as far as the day-to-day. -day. Tell us about that curriculum and what we can expect start students to learn in each area. Okay, well, our curriculum includes Bible, and in Bible and kindergarten, what we do is we do a survey study of Genesis through Revelation. We call it a walk through the Bible, mm -hmm. covering all the major narratives of the Bible and then integrating biblical truth in all subject areas. We also do a Bible memory verse program with a verse that coordinates with each letter of the alphabet. And we enjoy speaking those verses. And we also sing those verses, <laughs> reaching different children in the ways they like to learn. Mm -hmm. In language arts, we use a phonics-based approach to teaching reading called open court. But we also balance that with sight words that they are learning to recognize. Also, our guided reading and writing program that starts in kindergarten and continues through the elementary school allows for us to meet with each reader and writer where he or she is and group them with like-leveled readers so that we can continue to meet them where they are in these skills and provide the appropriate level of small group support and challenge where necessary. Handwriting Without Tears is our handwriting program which has actually begun in our pre-K program as well, where we focus on proper formation of capital and lowercase letters in print. Cursive is a handwriting program that do, we do start at WCCS in second grade. Mm -hmm. In math, we use a curriculum in our elementary program called primary mathematics, which emphasizes using hands-on manipulatives and visuals when introducing new concepts, before memorizing facts. 
This creates a strong foundation for number sense and develops confidence in learners as they feel more and more comfortable manipulating numbers and using different strategies to solve numerical problems. Science and social studies are monthly units of exploration on various topics, and we like to integrate research, writing, and public speaking into these monthly mm -hmm. units. One of the best things we do, I think. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Agreed. For example, in the month of December, all of our students were learning about how countries around the world celebrate Christmas. Each student was assigned a country to research. They write a few sentences about it, draw a picture or bring up pictures from um, the internet. And each student took turns presenting in class their findings. We continue this in several other science social study units in the second semester. And I love um, all of those pieces, especially when I'm down there doing tours and mm -hmm. your bulletin board right now has the Christmas uh, projects that are up there. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, for my own boys, I just remember being in awe at the things that they were learning and how they were growing, um, certainly emotionally and socially, but in all of the academic areas. Um, I even remember coming into a math class and they were playing a game. And they didn't know they were learning multiplication, but that's what they were doing. They were regrouping with this game. And I just thought, wow, they are understanding the foundational concept of how numbers work. Mm -hmm. And that was so cool. But tell me about some of the things that we hope are outcomes coming out of the kindergarten program that we expect for our students to have. Okay, well, there are many desired student outcomes. Um, spiritually, we want them to be able to acknowledge God's love. And we want them to know that the Bible is a true and very special book mm -hmm. to memorize scriptures and emulate godly character. So each month does have a character trait, a biblical character trait that mm -hmm. we connect with. Mm -hmm. Socially and emotionally, we want them to value family relationships and to see themselves as unique image bearers of God to be part of his family and that he is our father and then to care for others. Mm -hmm. Cognitively, we want them to have the ability to explore, create, experiment, observe, plan, investigate, and question. We want them to be able to read, mm -hmm. and reading by phonics and sight words is the approach that we use. We want them to be able to compose various styles of writing. We've done lists, we've done biography and autobiography. So we have numerous areas that we um, cover when we do our writing. We want them to recognize for the relationship between numerals, their quantities to reason and solve problems. In the physical um, area, we want them to be independent in caring for their own needs. And we want them to develop large and small muscle control, both in the classroom and then through enrichments and like PE. Uh, we want them to be able to follow basic safety needs um, so that they are healthy and mm -hmm. strong and mm -hmm. safe in our school setting. Mm -hmm. And as Jean mentioned, I mean, as Jane mentioned, <laughs> excuse me, two J's, yes. yes. Um, we do see a lot of growth over the course of the kindergarten year. Mm -hmm. Kindergartners also get to experience a variety of enrichment classes. They go to classes like art and music and library once a week and Spanish and PE twice a week. Uh, we also have chapel at the beginning of every week, which is one of our very special times. Mm -hmm. Kindergarten is also... Um, a time where we do various um, outside things. We have service opportunities, and we also have field trips. Uh, some of the field trips that we have gone on and will continue to go is to Brattonsville to just observe and compare how the children there lived along with the pilgrim children. We go to the planetarium, we go to the pumpkin farm, we go to the York Museum. There are different things that we do. One of my favorite field trips and service learning opportunity is tied to our celebration of the 100th day of school. Leading up to that day, we ask families to have their children do chores at home with the goal of earning at least 100 pennies. Then the children bring in their pennies to transfer over into a dollar, hence a math learning connection. 
We then take these dollars that they've earned and go on a field trip to the Dollar Tree to buy items on a list of needs mm -hmm. from the children's attention home. We kind of focus that it's things they need. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our local orphanage. This allows our children to learn how to bless our world through following Jesus. Um, we practice empathy and compassion through um, these opportunities to care for and serve others, taking what they've learned in the classroom in a lesson and applying it in a practical and real way. Mm -hmm. And I think this picture on the right of the slide is when they went to the mm -hmm. Dollar Tree um, for that field trip. That's one of my favorite experiences, mm -hmm. too. Um, so thinking about some of the questions that I typically get as admissions director, one of the common ones is what is a typical day like schedule, you know, so mm -hmm. Miss Earl, can you tell us a little more detail around that? Okay, well, the slide that you're seeing shows you um, a typical schedule for kindergarten. There may be some changes, obviously, due to the schedules of our school, but this is basically what you'll see each day or in, a, in the classroom. Um, the pieces that come together to provide an environment where children love to learn and develop skills for lifelong learning is part of this day. Mm -hmm. uh, there are times that are teacher directed, but there are also times where the children can discover mm -hmm. and where they are free to do what they would like to do and to interact with one another. We allow time for breaks. Um, there are two 30 minute um, recesses and there are enrichment classes. And we put the majority of our core content areas like reading, math, and Bible in the morning. We find that we know young minds and attention spans <laughs> are at their best earlier on in Isn't the day. Isn't that true? It's yes. true. For the teachers too. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And what I love about this, going back to being developmentally appropriate, this is such a kindergarten friendly schedule, right? Um, we, we know that they need breaks, they need activities. And as you said, teacher directed and student led. So it's mm -hmm. a good balance of that. And to that point, Dr. Jolly, we know that kindergarten is an important transition year for our mm -hmm. children. And we've talked a lot about how we, um, do a great job of meeting the needs of the early childhood learner in kindergarten. Um, but this is also a transition to elementary school, big kids school, where the stakes do get higher as we continue to go through that academic progress track journey. And so what are the tools and the supports that we have in place here at our school to make sure we're preparing each student well in their academic journey? Sure. Well, Jane, I think most importantly, the teachers take time to know each child mm -hmm. through daily observation and interactions. Uh, they also do a checklist of skills. Um, which is done three times a year to evaluate progress and to share information with parents. We use some standardized screenings and assessments as well, such as dial four. Uh, this is done with our 4K children and then also with any new K-5 students coming in. It helps us to understand how a child is developing in different areas, and it tells us what they're ready to learn. We also do search and teach. Uh, this is done with all of our kindergarten students in August and September. And the assessment tasks identify potential vulnerabilities to learning difficulties before academic failure ever occurs. It provides a profile of strengths and weaknesses and skills basic to reading and language arts. And it results in a structured intervention individualized for the child's needs. Search and Teach is part of the Excel program at WCCS, which provides support for children with differences in learning. And this can include one-on-one -on -one and group intervention, both inside and outside the classroom. But some children, especially younger children, need services that we don't have trained staff to support. So we often work with outside providers who specialize in those areas things like occupational therapy or speech, nurses or behavior specialists. Teachers work closely with parents to identify and meet the needs of each child. Um, they hold two planned parent meetings during the year to discuss progress and to share goals. We need to hear from parents and we wanna share with them what we're seeing in the classroom. Of course, parents are all, always welcome to reach out for a meeting with a teacher. Our goal is to help each child grow and learn according to their developmental needs, to help them experience success 
and to support their learning needs. Absolutely. There's so much great support, I think, here in our kindergarten program um, and really focusing on addressing those early intervention needs for the benefit of the student, right? Um, so that kind of, we're talking about our academics um, and there's more to the school and to the kindergarten program than that. And so other common questions that I get, my favorite subject, food. Dr. Jolly, you want to tell us about food in sure, kindergarten? Certainly. <laughs> Food's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and just like our K-5 program, we provide hot lunch options for our students at WCCS. Uh, kindergarten uh, also eats in their classroom. And this is really an intentional choice that we've made uh, because of their de developmental growth. It provides them more social interaction and just learning. How do you sit down and eat in a family-friendly atmosphere for lunch. First grade students uh, will begin eating in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Also, just like in our pre-K program, we provide an extended school care program, both before school and after school for our kindergarten students. Right, and those are certainly important details to know for any parent uh, considering the kindergarten program. And I want to thank you, Dr. Jolly and Ms. Earl, for just such a thoughtful, insightful look into the kindergarten program at our school. Um, as we finish up, there's another common question that I get as the admissions director that I want to address. And this is an element of our school operations that really doesn't start being available until kindergarten for families. And that is called variable tuition. So I've put a slide together to show you our variable tuition rates for the coming school year. This is our form of financial assistance that families can apply for. Um, the range of tuition pricing that you see on your screen, that represents what's possible for families who apply for this reduced pricing and qualify based on factors like income, expenses, size of family, special circumstances. The top end of that range, if you're looking at kindergarten, that $9,240, that is your sticker price for families who don't apply for variable tuition or don't qualify. And the bottom end of the range represents the lowest possible tuition price for a family. And again, this is through an application process. And for that process, we use an independent company to assess a family's unique financial situation through an application process. It's kind of similar to applying for the FAFSA when you go to college. And that company gives our committee at the school a recommendation as to what your family should be able to afford. And then we compare that as a school committee to the listing of all the variable tuition applications that we've received and what we've budgeted as a school in the amount of awards that we can give away um, to this year's families. Variable tuition applications open in January and our school committee meets every two weeks starting in February to consider these awards. And so because there is a budgeted amount that we have to award each year, with each successive meeting that the committee goes into throughout the spring, there's less from that big pot to give away. So if this is a program that is of interest to you families, please apply sooner rather than later because it's likely that in the summer, we will have awarded all of our funds. So as we wrap up today, I hope that you found this webinar helpful to you. I've included our contact information um, here on this slide in case you'd like to reach out to any of us, um, our emails with any questions. And I would also like to personally invite you to come for a tour to see the kindergarten experience for yourself at the school. I know virtual presentations are great, but there's nothing like seeing it in person. And we'd certainly love to have you do that. There is a tour calendar available on our website under the admissions tab. And this is a great way to see the school up close and personal. Thanks again for listening today. And we just wanna let you know, we are gonna be praying for you that God may direct your path and decisions as you determine what's best for your child's kindergarten experience next year. So thank you again for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.